Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, so hi everyone, uh, I see a few tired faces, but I think overall the uh, LoRa Alliance um, is pushing for the enthusiasm in the crowd. Um, I'll be taking 15 minutes of your time and walk you through uh, some of the real use cases that we've been working on in India. And uh, specifically tuned around the Indian uh, kind of uh, environment and in the Indian problems. Um, so these are the four verticals I want to highlight. Uh, the first one is smart agriculture. It goes more along the theme of the uh, AMM. Uh, we are also targeting smart water management. Uh, two other use cases are smart parking and uh, logistics and manufacturing setup. So the first one is uh, agriculture. Uh, the requirement was, uh, 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 was very detailed, but uh, so what it essentially boils down to is uh, uh, we worked with a huge uh, tobacco manufacturing company uh, who buys from farmers. And um, uh, the tobacco has a, a unique phase of around uh, six weeks to eight weeks where it has to be cured. What curing means is essentially uh, drying the tobacco leaves and uh, it's a kind of delicate process. Uh, uh, the more you uh, dry it faster, the, uh, the less it gets uh, dried completely. If you dry it really, really fast, it doesn't dry in from the inside and a lot of green pigmentation is left over in the leaves. If you dry it very slowly, the leaves actually lose the flavor, the fragrance and those kind of things. Um, so it's a, it's a delicate balance. Uh, what we actually came out with is, um, is a sensor-based solution uh, for the farmers. So uh, we used a host of humidity and temperature controlled uh, uh, devices in the actual barns. And all this data was collected from multiple barns in an area. Uh, what we also did was uh, monitor these uh, temperature uh, and humidity values and uh, project it over a period of time. So what that does for the farmer is it in fact uh, uh, tells a farmer how to modulate the different parameters of temperature and humidity within the barn, like close the gates of the barn, open up the windows to enable more humidity, or use kind of a humidifier if it's a different kind of climate. Uh, once he did that, we, he actually re uh, reported back with a, uh, a less, uh, so 8% reduction in losses of crops, uh, which means 8% uh, more of produce was being able to sold to be sold to the, uh, to the tobacco uh, collection agency. Uh, so this was use case one, pretty interesting. Uh, uh, I think they are one of our repeat customers now. And um, yeah, so this, this was one success story. The second use case I wanted to quickly project was the water management. Um, the problem there is, uh, uh, it's several folds. So one of the problems is uh, frequent data collection. Uh, the current walk-by solutions, they do not offer a lot of uh, flexibility in when you want the data. They cannot uh, dictate to the device when to start sending the data. Uh, and every hour uh, gathering of data or every day gathering of data becomes very difficult over a period of time, right? Uh, so the use case that we actually uh, tried to solve was uh, one, to collect the data. The second, to avoid pilferage. Uh, a lot of these uh, pipelines are bypassed, so a lot of these meters are actually in India, it's a big problem. A lot of these uh, water connections are bypassed and a uh, lot of leakages happen. People are not really sure what's the exact billable amount because what it shows from the source is what it shows differently on the meter. And uh, there's no uh, direct way to measure that if you're not using uh, smart devices. Um, so yeah, billing system was not streamlined. Uh, we had uh, no real-time availability of consumption, so you cannot plan your uh, consumption accordingly. And then the, uh, it's, dif it's difficult to determine how much you are losing on revenues because you're, you don't know who is using the water, basically. So um, what we came up with a smart uh, uh, retrofit uh, device that gets attached to existing meters. And also we came up with a solution which is an ultrasonic uh, uh, water meter with inbuilt LoRaWAN. And we actually got out, uh, went out and uh, deployed it in a, uh, in a city called Vardha in Maharashtra. It's also available as a white paper on the LoRa Alliance website. Uh, and this came with an uh, with a, uh, Android application that the consumer actually could use and uh, could see the consumption of uh, this meter data. Um, so yeah, these are some of the screenshots. Uh, almost two years since we have actually deployed this. And uh, the white paper is out. I encourage you guys to go to the LoRa Alliance website, download the white paper to, more, to know more about this. 
But uh, one of the few challenges we face with this project is Watermeter is a difficult uh, business for a network point of view. Uh, a lot of these water meters are deep indoors on the ground floor or below the ground floor. And uh, what that demands from us is uh, our noiseless environment and deep indoor kind of penetration, which is difficult to, uh, um, uh, to achieve in uh, urban areas like Delhi or, you know, you're talking about a uh, lot of concrete in these kind of scenarios. Uh, so yeah, it's a good challenge statement, but uh, at the end we were able to have uh, more than 90% of packet success rate, which was uh, good considering the harsh terrain. And uh, so yeah, which, uh, this was a successful project, uh, still up, up and going. I think Ali today announced more than 200,000 device connections uh, expected on the Sendra network. Uh, and this is all water meter. Uh, the next use case I wanted to present was parking. This one's a bit more interesting and more customized for India. Uh, so India, unlike European countries or US countries, uh, or, or US or uh, Canadian uh, cities, uh, we have a lot of unmanaged traffic and a lot of uh, cases where the uh, people actually driving on the street uh, take a detour from the street and actually park on the road, uh, on the sides of the road. And this is very common. Uh, people park there for 15 minutes, go buy groceries, go buy stuff and come back and take the car. But this is illegal. These, uh, and they cause a lot of traffic congestion, a lot of uh, um, emergency vehicles are not able to pass. So a lot of, lot of different kind of issues there. Um, so what we did is we worked with a smart city and uh, we proposed a solution based on uh, enforcement agencies being able to use an interface where they could actually determine uh, how many legal cars are parked in the vicinity and they're also able to get this data to a city dashboard so the city knows um, how many legal parkings happened in a day right uh, now it, it also closely relates to the revenues from uh, issuing challans to the offenders right the city right now is clueless of how many legal parkings actually happened and how much was the amount of revenue generated from these challans because the data is not transparent so they basically have to rely on the word of mouth from their traffic cops. And um, there are ways in India to, to get around this problem with the cops. And uh, what the city actually suffered from is uh, lack of transparency there. So we actually did a solution, an end-to-end -end solution. It's called UPARC. UPARC is basically an enforcement app that goes to a traffic cop. The cop can actually view real time around him where is the nearest offense happening, uh, illegal park happening. And it's not only that, it can also give on a combined ginger dashboard uh, the amount of traffic, uh, the peak hours, the rush hours, uh, how many illegal parkings that happened, how many managed parkings that could happen. We're even expanding the offerings of UPARC to include a managed parking scenario, which means a person can actually book a parking spot and actually reserve a parking for, let's say, one hour, reach at the parking spot, park his car, pay the bills online using Paytm or an online wallet and then actually uh, uh, go away without having to deal with any human interface. Um, so yeah, uh, the challenge there was uh, again, lack of available infrastructure and uh, lack of actual physical parking spots. So uh, you do have to obtain a license from the city to be able to dig out the parking spot. And we actually partnered with a US company for the devices and it's has been working tremendously for us. Uh, we two days back also announced a collaboration with Bosch India, and uh, we are using Bosch parking sensors, which were not previously available for the Indian channel plan. Now they are um, to go out and deploy in more and more cities across India. So yeah, this, this was an interesting use case. Uh, a lot of challenges, by the way, on the device side, the device has to bear a lot. It's on an Indian ground, which means a lot of water logging on the streets, a lot of dust, uh, uh, and, and the, the ground is uh, kind of a difficult uh, uh, place for the RF to properly propagate. A uh, lot of uh, Fresnel zone effects, you know, happening on, on, on those regions. So yeah, but uh, the project came out successfully. We had more than 30% ROI from the project. What that translates to is a city being able to recoup and break even on the entire infrastructure deployment in, in a quarter, basically, four months. Uh, yeah, so we were published. That's me standing over there and there. Uh, we were on the paper. And this was the first time this was happening in India, and this was almost in uh, two years back, 2017 end, I think. 
Um, yeah, so, so big ROI number there, a big use case for the city. Uh, the city could actually now get revenues that it did not know were available already. Uh, they have a clear picture of how many illegal parking happen. And when they get the revenue, they're directly correlated with the number of illegal parks that the dashboard shows. Um, the next uh, and probably the most interesting use case uh, revolves around tracking um, vehicles, assets in a warehouse. Uh, sounds like a normal kind of use case, but uh, the catch here is the area is very, very remote and it's deeply indoors. Uh, all of these warehouses are concrete or teen sheds. So the GPS doesn't have good penetration to, to be able to detect uh, indoor kind of uh, geolocationing. And um, so the customer was relying on uh, proprietary RFID modules to be able to detect. Uh, it, it's like these fast tag lanes that are very popular in Delhi nowadays. Uh, you enter into a warehouse and the boom barriers open up and uh, you are getting detected by an ultra high frequency RFID tag that's installed on your vehicle windshield. And um, there's a reader which is approximately six to uh, three to four to six meters away. Uh, and uh, that automatically detects your tag information transmitted over, uh, uh, you know, uh, RS-232 ports. Um, so what we did is, uh, and it's a big land, it's an eight hectare area. They have 18 warehouses in that area. And uh, uh, what they want to do is uh, when a truck is actually passing in one warehouse, uh, it sequentially picks up load from warehouse number one, goes and deposits to warehouse number two, or picks up something from there, goes and deposits in warehouse number 16. And uh, they, they only react when they see the truck coming in. And this wastes a lot of time, because when the truck comes in, you got to uh, gather the manpower, you got to gather the, uh, the, the loading material. And uh, if they knew this information half an hour in advance, they would have already done that. Um, so this is a lot of scrambling happen in the current uh, scenario, but uh, how we solved it is uh, uh, we use their current uh, RFID readers and we use the port, uh, the RS-232 port that was already available on these uh, readers and we made a device in collaboration with a good partner of ours to develop an RS-232 to LoRaWAN conversion device which actually takes in the payload from the RS-232 serial port, makes a LoRaWAN PDU out of it and then transmits it over LoRa. The difficulty with doing that is uh, RFID in India uses the same ISM band, which is 865 to 867 megahertz. So a lot of uh, noise prone environment, uh, which had to be bypassed using a smart software algorithm, using the right delays to transmit, using the right, uh, using like blocking physically the electronics part of the RFID reader while the LoRaWAN transmission is happening. So it, it's kind of a, a tricky situation but we were able to achieve an ROI of uh, 50%. And this comes from the mouth of the customer. Uh, the customer previously was wasting almost um, 30 minutes uh, at every warehouse. And if you combine it and aggregate this to 18 warehouses in that area, that's a lot of time wasted. And that's for every single time every truck comes in. So imagine if, uh, if there is 200 truck fleet actually passing through every day, the amount of time these guys are taking to assemble stuff and, you know, scramble the workmen. And um, now that's all managed. In fact, what they do is, uh, if the truck comes to warehouse number A, they have an estimated time of arrival to the warehouse number 10, and uh, they can pre-plan this. And there is downlink sent from the uh, LoRaWAN network to the individual warehouses, informing them of when a truck is impending for arrival. So a lot of uh, uh, good use cases here. Uh, in increasing order of ROIs here. Uh, for your reference, if you guys have any questions, I still have almost half a minute, one minute left. Does anyone have any questions in the audience? Uh, can someone please provide a microphone back there? Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Siri. I'm from Alluvium. As you were talking about vehicle tracking, this is not static, this is dynamic, right? So I wanted to know what is the accuracy we are looking at? So, that's so, uh, so yeah, when, when I say tracking, I'm actually tracking in which warehouse the vehicle is coming and in which warehouse it's leaving right now. Uh, a meter level accuracy or a 10 meter level accuracy is, is, is not relevant for the use case. And you're absolutely right. It could have been a GPS use case, but it's not. 
all the uh, the logistics companies uh, care about is uh, what is the estimated time of arrival of a vehicle and so they all they need to know is which warehouse the truck is when and what asset is in what warehouse is there any other questions we have room time for one more all right um kush uh yeah thank you so much for giving this wonderful uh speech and demonstration of roi uh, one thing I wanted to highlight is the the integrated RS-232 port that uh, you, I think, led that initiative on the whole idea. It's now snowballed into being an industrial retrofit solution for many, many use cases. Um, do you mind quickly explaining the, the ease of using it in different types of machineries and use yep. cases? Sure. I mean, um, yeah, so uh, RS-232, RS-485 are very, very common protocols. A uh, lot of metering industries use this, a lot of uh, industrial IoT companies use this. So in fact, after finishing the product, we have had requirements from electricity meters, which use a lot of RS-232 port as part of the uh, BIS standards. Uh, we have had uh, textile industry actually deploy this device on their, uh, on their machinery and actually this device not only, uh, it has a decent amount of application uh, flash available, which means a lot of edge processing can also happen on the device. It's a class C device, so it's powered. It doesn't waste a lot of battery doing this processing. Um, so how they're using it is for an edge use case, when the data is coming in for vibration, temperature, humidity, oil levels of the machine, uh, they're in fact using a dynamic uh, filtering mechanism to determine what's good and what's a bad vibration level. And this changes over a period of, uh, over the lifetime of a machine, right? The machine has different thresholds in the beginning when it's brand new. And like your car, it will deteriorate over a period of time and the thresholds change. And what's acceptable as 1% plus and minus today can be 5% in two years. So this machine actually does edge processing on that node and only when the alert conditions are established, the data is actually transmitted over LoRaWAN. So, so, so we basically are taking, uh, we've all heard of retrofitting in the utility space, but now uh, retrofitting in the industrial space is also happening. Thank you, sir. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank Please you. a round of applause.